Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The day has finally arrived for my review of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which came out today. So, uh, let, let's talk about this movie. I want to just right off the bat give you my, um, my uh, very surface level feelings on it in that it's probably Zack Snyder's best DC movie. I haven't seen Watchmen. Uh, I don't like Man of Steel. Probably make a whole video talking about that. It's an alright movie. Not a very good Superman movie. Uh, Batman v Superman, I've made a video talking about why I like that. It's really, it's, it's, it's kind of old though. Might not want to check that one out. But, uh, but this one I think is better than either Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. Uh, because I think, with the exception of Superman, which I will talk about, I think it gets the characters right for pretty much all the characters. I think uh, it's not nearly as controversial in how it presents the characters uh, than Batman v Superman uh, was before it. Um, the beginning, for sure, is pretty similar. I think that um, a lot of the introduction stuff for the team was kept in the theatrical cut, but uh, as you go along, it gets more and more uh, different. Uh, and speaking of that, I think the pacing is pretty good. For a four-hour movie, it was pretty entertaining all the way through. It did drag a little at the end, um, basically because the last half hour uh, or more of the movie was the final action scene. Um, which, it was a good action scene, and I'll talk about that, but uh, it, it did, you know, it, it did drag a little bit at the end. But, for the most part, did a very good job on not being a boring four-hour-long movie. And Zack Snyder, uh, he really wants to build this mythology around the characters. He wants, uh, and you really get this vibe from the movie. It's it's not just about, you know, some superheroes running around it, like the theatrical cut was. Um, it, the theatrical cut felt even this this does have a little bit of a vibe of this which I'll get to but the theatrical cut felt like a bunch of guys running around in suits uh, while two gods wrestled uh, and that was the movie this one feels more like a pantheon uh, of gods assembling together in like this origin which is really what um, Zack Snyder intended and I think uh, that the four hour long nature of it adds to the uh, uh, mythological feeling of the movie in terms of, uh, the movie itself feels like a myth a legend because it's this four hour long movie it's like you're watching Ben-Hur or something like that uh, so yeah but let, let's get into more of the nitty-gritty here let's talk about some things that the movie did better character wise ie things that happened in both movies uh, but were done differently in this movie that were better there are a few of these things but the two that stand out to me uh, one, I like that the team isn't really conflicted about Superman coming back. Aquaman does have a little bit, um, of, uh, of, um, he, he's kind of hesitant about bringing Superman back right as it's about to happen. Like, he, he basically has cold feet about it. But for the most part, the entire team is on board with it. And uh, while it was an interesting choice, um, to have, uh, uh to have them kind of Ha be conflicted about it in the theatrical cut when they refilm that. Uh, I overall think that it doesn't work for a Justice League origin movie because uh, it, the team's supposed to be coming together. I don't think they should be so conflicted about something right after they come together. And so I think that this movie does that better. Um, also, while Superman is still a god, which I will get to later, Wonder Woman and Cyborg feel a lot more powerful in this version. Like, Cyborg, you know, it, it, his dad even says that he, with just a thought, could launch all the nukes in the world at once. It, he's very powerful. And Wonder Woman, while she definitely had some power in the theatrical cut, it feels even more grandiose here with the extend, extended action scenes that we saw uh, where... Um, she definitely could, she, before Superman shows up, she's easily the most powerful on the team. Steppenwolf wants to take her on one by, uh, one on one. Uh, now let's, let's talk about a few things that work specifically because there's more time and there's more scenes in there. Uh, first of all, Cyborg's story. Obviously, Cyborg is the heart of the movie and his journey is a great one throughout this movie. I, I loved it. Uh, I, I legitimately, there were only... Mainly because, uh, you know, I knew a lot of details about this movie's plot um, uh, going into it. I wasn't very surprised by very many things watching this movie. 
it was almost a checklist in a way. And, that, and that's my fault. That's, not, that's nobody's uh, fault in making the movie. Uh, but for me, there were only a couple of times where I looked at the movie and I actually, like, I was wowed. I was really impressed. And one of those was during that scene um, of Cyborg kind of learning about his powers from his dad's recording. Uh, and, like, you know, that, that scene where he helps out that woman... You know, that that was just a really, really good scene. Really well done. Maybe one of the, like, definitely top five uh, best scenes that uh, Zack Snyder has done in his uh, DC movies, for sure. Or at least the three that I've seen. So, that was really good. Steppenwolf has better motivations in this movie. Like, before it was just he's conquering the world. He's coming back. You could, if you if you knew about the anti-life equation and saw it in the movie, uh, he he just literally, the they uh, asked the question last movie, or the, the in the theatrical cut, why are these people invading Earth? And Diana just says they want to invade. And it's like, and, and they say I want to say they might have said something along those lines in this movie too. Uh, but it has a different context. In the first movie, literally, all, all they want to do is destroy Earth. That's all they want, really. That's all Steppenwolf wants, because he's the only one there. He does reference Darkseid, like, once, but that's it. But in this version, Steppenwolf has his own personal motivations, even though Darkseid is kind of treated as, basically, the living embodiment of evil who just wants to take over the world, which is an interesting take on the character. It kind of reminds me of the Smallville version. Um... But at the same time, is a little bit boring, and I'll get to that uh, in just one moment. Uh, but Steppenwolf, yeah, he has better motivations of like wanting to win back Darkseid's trust. But at the same time, he doesn't really go on much of a journey. He doesn't really develop throughout the movie, so he's a little more interesting than the theatrical cut, where like everybody was talking about how boring Steppenwolf was when that movie came out. Uh, so he's a little more interesting this time around. Uh, but he doesn't go on much of a journey. Uh, I, I wish they would have uh, given him a little bit more of an arc to go through through the movie instead of being this um, this uh, hulking uh, uh, god that just walked around uh, uh, hitting things, basically. Uh, and, to, and to talk about that, Snyder isn't really that good with the new gods, I think. And um, I think it's just... I, if you look at the... Um, uh, storyboards for the Zack Snyder's Justice League sequels, even there, uh, Zack Snyder uh, was planning on having uh, Darkseid basically just being this force of destruction. He wouldn't have really been a villain in his own right in terms of having this plan or anything. Like, Justice League 2, the real villain would have been Lex Luthor, and Darkseid would have been this weapon that he brought to Earth. Same thing in Zack Snyder's Justice League 3. So, I, I really think that Zack Snyder, if he were to continue this, if he were to fix this movie further, which, you know, obviously he's not going to do. This is just my opinion here. Um, uh, I, I really think Steppenwolf and Darkseid, and also, I guess, Desaad, but I, I don't think he, he he's super necessary. Um, I think they need to have more depth to them, uh, more, like, having personal goals rather than just destruction, because I think that just makes for a more compelling character. But I do really like the more lore that comes out with the new gods. Batman is better in this movie. Um, in the theatrical cut, it kind of kind of came across as like Batman suddenly loving Superman and wanting to bring him back. But in this one, he um, basically he 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 does say outright that he's unlike in Batman v Superman, where he was thinking super uh, logically and through reason. Like if there's even a one percent chance, we have to treat it as an absolute certainty. In this time, he is thinking um, uh, with his faith. Uh, which I guess you could say is another Zack Snyder allegory for Jesus in that he's putting his faith in Superman. Uh, but yeah, it's I really think that's great. Uh, Barry's scene with his dad is a little bit extended and I think is a hundred times better. Um, and then also the finale in general, even if it is a little long, uh, like I said, it's, it's way better than just like kind of a fight scene, you know? Uh, where we get the time travel aspect, we get the what if scenario, it was great. Uh, things that aren't really that better, Aquaman, just kind of plain. I, I don't mind it though, since Aquaman uh, at the time was supposed to, and since has had a great journey with uh, the Aquaman movies. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't really get better or worse uh, in this version. There are a few things in here that are a little out of left field though. 
And I and the main problem I think is um, trying to set up things in the future that only really make sense for fans. And that is Martian Manhunter. Like he shows up in two scenes, and while the last scene he shows up in is fine, like it is a little bit like fan servicey in terms of like. You know, if you're an audience member, like, what, some alien shows up at the end and talks to Bruce Wayne and is like, hey, maybe I'll join your team one day. It's a little weird. It doesn't serve any purpose outside of tipping a hat to the fans, which is fine. But I think the other scene with him being uh, Martha Kent just doesn't really make much sense. Uh, I, there may have been, like, this thing of, oh, we'll explain it in a future movie. But that's the thing. This is a movie. It's I, I shouldn't be... They're, they can leave things for future movies, but not things that make me confused by the end of the movie of like, whoa, whoa what was happening there? More, It can leave me with cur curiosity, like, oh, I wonder if they're going to explore this aspect in a later movie. But I was just confused by Martian Manhunter. Uh, the anti-life Steppenwolf scene, I think that was supposed to be a vision. It also comes out of left field, uh, where like Steppenwolf retreats and uh out of the army and it's not explained until later that he was called by the mother boxes and then he's just like oh what what's going on and then he has the vision of the anti-life equation and i think that was a little out of left field too and then the cyborg future vision uh i think that actually worked within the movie i think that it worked in the sequence uh but i think it is a little repetitive with BVS, and then we also know that there would have been another one of these types of visions in the next movie from the storyboards uh, So that's not really that great and it's kind of unnecessary um, Like I guess it's a bit of a tease that you know, they would fail later on But I think it would have been a better twist uh, If the world had just been destroyed and then the flash would have had to reverse time and do that stuff uh, later in the movie before now Let's talk about something that didn't work and that is Superman Superman is a god in this movie, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, Zack Snyder and the writers that have been working with him, I think, don't really get Superman in terms of he's not really a god. I'll probably make a whole video talking about why Superman has been kind of mistreated in a way, um, and people, like, make him out to be this god. And as I said before, Cyborg and Wonder Woman do seem more powerful. Same thing with The Flash to an extent with the time travel stuff. But, uh, you know, in this version... I think it's just, it, it's really a bad idea to have a movie where the Justice League form, where the whole thing is that Superman is so powerful that, like, he is more powerful than the rest of the league combined. Like, it's kind of this thing where if they didn't have Superman come back in this movie, that would have worked and they could be like, oh, we need to form the league so that we can be as powerful as Superman once was. Uh, and then maybe they resurrect him in a later movie. Or they could resurrect him in this movie and just treat him like, okay, he's really powerful, he would be an asset, but not like, oh, well, we can't defeat Steppenwolf, we need Superman, uh, he, he's the only one that can defeat Steppenwolf, and we'll basically be there for backup, is what it kind of feels like, and I don't think that's a very good idea. His transformation as a character makes no sense either, I think that, uh, him just coming back to life and suddenly having a different personality doesn't really hold water. I think, well, you could definitely just say, oh, when you come back to life, uh, your personality changes a little bit. I think it's kind of lazy and kind of a cop-out, especially when you uh, tell the fans, okay, we're not super faithful to the character from the comics right now, but that's just for story purposes. Later on, you're going to get your comic book accurate Superman, which is a completely fine thing to do, but then to basically just do kind of a cop-out and not explain why they've become the comic book version. Um, just, yeah, it's, it's kind of lazy in my opinion. And the black suit doesn't make any sense. Like, it's cool to have the black and silver suit, uh, and I guess it does kind of represent his change, but why you would represent Superman becoming how he is in the comics with a suit that he only wears uh, in the comics when he's specifically not how he usually is in the comics, I don't know. Uh, and it's not serving the same purpose as in the comics of it symbolizing a darker Superman. Even though we do get one scene that's, for some reason, never addressed, where Superman does very clearly have a darker side to him, which is a little weird. But, you know, well, that, I'll, I'll kind of look past that. Finally, let's talk about the epilogue a little bit. I think it's kind of uh, an anomaly. Like, it's definitely nothing we've ever seen before uh, in terms of structuring a movie. Uh, it's clearly a bunch of bits and bobs put together. But as Zack Snyder's Justice League something made kind of for the fans, 
it makes sense that they would do this and it, i i honest i think it's okay clearly it's just like if this was released theatrically the um uh the nightmare scene wouldn't have happened that wasn't in the original script uh they would have just ended it with um the cyborg montage maybe the martian manhunter scene i don't know if that was filmed in additional uh shooting or not but um maybe that would have been in there and then the mid credit scene which was just one of the scenes in the epilogue in this version but yeah let's end off by talking about the nightmare sequence the nightmare sequence was good i thought jared leto did a good job clearly very different than suicide squad but nonetheless very good uh, i still can't stand his laugh but i think he does a good job as joker uh it, it very almost seductive in a way it does fill us in a little bit about the backstory with uh, uh with robin and batman and joker uh but yeah i think it i think it's really cool um I, I think uh, it was clearly, and Deborah Snyder has talked about this in an interview recently, but uh, basically that scene was done because Zack wanted to kind of make a scene to close out the movie in a way that doesn't necessarily tie up the franchise because they're not ignoring the fact that there were supposed to be sequels, but it does kind of put a bow on it and also lets us see Batman and Joker interact uh, for the first and probably only time in this franchise. So yeah, that, that was cool. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League in the comments. I really liked it. Uh, I, th I think it has its problems, but it has its merits as well. Uh, subscribe. Uh, tomorrow I'm doing my episode 1 review of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Don't forget to subscribe for daily videos on the franchise you love. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.